Awesome. So, uh, boys and girls, let's just put this on here. Uh, Dave, what I'll do in the morning, I'll, I'll cut this so the actual video starts right here. But this, boys and girls, is Dave Marsland. Uh, some of you will know him from Manchester Runfest. Some of you will know him as the UK brand ambassador for Solution Distillers. Um, most of us in the industry know him as industry legend. I've known him for a very long time. He's not as old as I thought he was. <laughs> I've literally known Dave of Dave for years and years and years, and I just assumed he'd been around a long time, but he hasn't. Dave, introduce yourself. Say hello. Well, I mean, to be fair, you think you just hit every mark there, so thank you. For <laughs> uh, no, obviously... and, and your YouTube channel as well. What's your rum on the couch? Rum on the couch, yes. I've, I've yeah. about that sometimes. It's, it's not as popular as yours yet, to be fair. But, uh... <laughs> it's... Is that the couch? Uh, no, this is not the couch, no. <laughs> this is, this is the dining room. I, uh, I got relegated. Ah, uh, so, so what is your, before we get, before we go into this, what, what is kind of your big day-to-day? Because -day? I know you've got loads and loads of hats that you kind of do in the industry. What, what's your main focus? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, every day is different, as you imagine. There's always events, there's always tastings, festivals. Um, um, but I mean, as you can run the master, there's elements obviously teaching the world of what bounty, charm, reserve, Admiral Rugby is all about, um, while also getting it into bars, you know, bars, restaurants, uh, retail, obviously, as well. We do a lot with uh, the good old e commerce and bricks and mortar sites. So um, it's, yeah, every day is a little bit different, but it all involves oh. rowing some way. How long have you been with Chairman's Reserve? Because this, without getting technical, this lot won't care about that. But pre Spirit Band, you were you were Chairman's Reserve pre Spirit Band, weren't you? So yeah, yeah. So uh, be nine years right now. Yeah, nine years. Um, so obviously, it was working with the original importer who brought all this into the UK back in uh, I think two thousand and four, off memory. Uh, uh, and obviously, Spirit Band. Uh, if, if obviously anyone was watching a couple of weeks ago with Ash, uh, obviously with Clement, uh, they've got a quite a wide portfolio. You know, they, they own Chairman Reserve, they own Bounty Mob, the, and the distillery that houses us. So that's oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I, I had no idea of that, to be fair. Yeah. So, so yeah, Spirit, Bam, Spirit Bam are kind of like a French company, aren't they? Yes, yeah. They're uh, based out of Martinique, uh, predominantly. So Clement was the first brand uh, they acquired. I want to say the 1980s, could be 1984. Um, and then also they own the sister brand, JM, which you, you see more in London, to be fair, not as much outside the M25, uh, but a fantastic agricole. You know, it's any, any sort of rum geek, especially agricole geeks, would, would be, well, they, they know about JM, let's put it that way. Um, so huge on actually understanding what agricole is and obviously how to present it to, to people who don't know what it is, if that makes sense. You know, sort of demystifying yeah. the elements of it's not all about the grass. Um, and then obviously, <laughs> firing St. Lucia Distillers back in 2016. Uh, obviously, that includes all the brands within that, both the ones we get internationally and obviously the ones you can only find on the island, which is, uh, well, I was going to say Marigo Bay Liqueurs, but... They've just launched in North America, so that's uh, a bit out of date now. Uh, and obviously, since then, Who, who's that? Sorry, Marigold. What do you say? Ma Marigold Bay Liqueurs. Oh, hello. It's a bit crazy. Oh yeah. Um, fingers crossed. You might start singing in the UK in the next couple of years. Won't oh. be anytime soon, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's bloody tasty. Oh, it's it's yeah. It's I, I don't want to get excited. I'll I'll go off on, the, on a tangent there. Um, no, that's I guess great. obviously since then they acquired uh, just the brands, not the distillery, in Mauritius as well. So Arcane and Beach House, which is yeah. one reason why we've been to obviously Manchester Rum Fest, Ian's Rum Fest coming up. We we'll obviously we did Leeds Rum Fest a couple of weekends ago. We've got all the brands are there now. And I need to get into Arc. Uh, what's it? Arcane? Ar it's not Arcanist, is it? No, what is it? Arcane. Arcane, that's it, because there's Arcanist or whatever it's called as well. I get confused with those two because I haven't really looked at Arcane too much. Um, so it's, we need to deep dive on that as well. But it's, it's, it's been around for several years, but it's not had the focus. And that's that's the cool thing about Spiribam is uh, they, they, they see the potential. 
you know, to get yeah. something to the next level. Uh, and I, I've been saying that for years with St. Lucia Distillers, that it's it's an amazing brand. Chairman's is the flagship. Everyone here has probably had seeing your VOs with Chairman's Reserve and so on. Um, and then you've, you kind of, oh, yeah, Bradley, oh, yeah, that one. And that, that's as far as it goes. So that's why I was keen to, uh, to obviously be here tonight. Uh, oh, look at yeah. that. Just, just, just the two. Look at that. Oh, no, I've got a few more. Uh, well, I've got, I've, I've got five, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about these. There we go. There we go. Are we all in? Yeah, there we go. Look, so the white. The white is getting a lot of love at the moment. Everyone's I've really fallen in love with that. That's really tasty. Yeah. yeah. It's, and the, it's really uh, honest, even just as it comes. It's a and surprisingly that one. Taste straight up. The legacy as well. The legacy is lovely. Oh, that mate, was, been the, been the um oh the uh, the Mai Tai um competition was the first time I've ever had that. Sur surprisingly. A couple of weeks yeah, ago. Is it, is it, is it straight for the liquid itself. Or in a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. No, straight straight for the liquid. Neat. I've, I've never had it before. I've I've done a why. I've just completely just gone past it to Admiral Rodney or whatever. But so yeah, that was delicious. I love that. Well, so I anyway, back... run virginity every once in a while. <laughs> so before we crack on with bounty, a couple of quick questions. You've I know you love your gin as well. We're not going to talk about gin, but what was what what was your first experience of rum? What got you into rum all those years ago? It was Lambs. Lambs, maybe. Was it? That was the one that, yeah, because it was the only one that was, that was dark. So I just presumed, obviously, when I was 18 years old, uh, that it would have <laughs> flavour. Because it was, it was upside down in an optic at a pub, which ironically I now live around the corner from. And um, I, I just like, well, there's Bacardi, which I didn't know any context of rum at the time. Um, I was like, well, that one looks sweet. I'll have that. And obviously, rum and coke. So, um, yeah, obviously, you turn into a double rum and coke. And then, as it, <laughs> as it comes, and then I started working in bars and I started to get context and realize there's, there's sort of other great things in the same categories. And, well, we've seen how developed rum's been ever since. So, uh, so yeah, I, I owe, a, owe a lot to Lambs. It's, it got me onto appreciating rum. But uh, to be brutally honest, Chairman's Reserve. Which is legitimately my favourite rum. Got me to understand rum better. Whatever your fate, you're, you're paid to say that. <laughs> yes, yes. Is you're it, right. If you win, hey, look. If you could have one rum, okay. Now I'll be fair on you. Like one rum under, because my channel's all about rum under fifty quid. So I'll give, I'll give you two. One rum under fifty quid. One rum over fifty quid. What we did you? Well, apparently you're not going to believe me when I say challenges of original. So I'm going to say my backup. For this, okay, which would obviously be champions of spiced. Um, no, I I'd probably would say under 50, yeah, yeah, under 50 and over 50. I would probably say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, isn't it? It's, 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 it's tough, isn't it? <laughs> Come back yeah. to it at the end, you can have yeah. a think. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll take you off. I ba basically the whole point of over 50 is we've because I don't really focus on the over 50s too much, but we have a little bit of chat about Admiral Rodney, but it's something we don't focus on. I know there's like what three, four Admiral Rodneys, yeah, and it's just kind of like pinpointing where they all kind of sit. We need to kind of deep dive into that a little bit, but that's that's why I was hoping I was hoping you were going to pick one of the Admiral Rodneys, but we'll we'll you know the, we'll the, leave it there. The, the Admiral Rodneys as a under well. Well, or, or, hey, or we could go, you know, is, is a chairman's one of the 1931s or something like that? Does that even pip Admiral Rodney? In my mind, it offers more complexity. Wow. So, it, but it's the, the way, I, the, the thing is, the way I always look at rum is what am I in the mood for right now? Which is why it's a, when anyone ever says, oh, Dave, let, let me buy a drink. Like, what rum do you want? So, oh, gosh, part of Guinness would be good. <laughs> and it freaks them out because <laughs> they're expecting <laughs> me to say a rum, you know, especially my own. It's like, I should really want a pack of this. <laughs> it's just if, if, if that's okay, you know, it's. Uh, um, hey, look, but, we all do it. It's fine. Yeah. But I was, I was on a, was on a, a stag deal yeah, last night. And um, obviously, naturally, we, we had to go to Lions Club in Manchester. And I, I just, everyone was like, oh, we're getting around the chair, which is Irving. It's like, yeah, yeah, we are. I'm not even going to put any expenses either. I'm just going to. I'm just going to pay that tab. It's not a problem because it's great that 
I was in the mood for it. I was in the mood for drinking rum. So nice, 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 nice. Right then, come on in. Deep dive. What is bounty? Give us bounty in a nutshell. What is it? I'll give it in a coconut shell. More appropriate. Yeah. Uh, so bounty is the spirit of Saint Lucia. Uh, it's essentially one of the oldest brands that St. Lucia's Distillers has to offer, but still available to this day. It's been around since uh, 1972. Um, wow. It's essentially, if, as soon as you get off the plane in the uh, in, in St. Lucia itself, you are going to see Bounty, whether it's straight into a rum punch at the, at, uh, at the hotel, you're going to see the adverts across the island, both old and new. It's it's a... Uh, it's it, it's a standard of what St. Lucia's lifestyle is all about. You know, when it comes to music, food, culture, the people, the sort of essence of what the Caribbean's about, that's what Bounty is. So it's it sort of defined itself as, well, like I said, the spirit of St. Lucia. Um, as you can see, we've obviously got five different expressions. Sort of labels as you'd expect, white, gold, dark, spiced, and of course a coconut. Uh, which is a liqueur, which obviously we'll uh, pick on a little bit later. Um, but it also showcases what column still can do. So what everyone's got to remember is, yes, we have pot stills. And yes, one of those expressions in front of you, Steve, right now does have a, sl a splash of pot still within it. But ultimately, that pot still was commissioned in 1998. And as you now know, Bounty's been around since the 70s. So it's all column still only. And it's really showcasing how versatile our column stills can be, which is opens up a whole new conversation around St. Lucia Distillers' ethos, especially back then as well. So, yeah, it's essentially it's something that defines what St. Lucia Distillers is. This is the introduction to the island. Wow. And just before going, because I know someone's going to ask this, and I know what the answer is. You've been to St. Lucia Distillers, haven't you? You've seen it, you've been there, you've done it. Uh, have, yeah. yeah, yeah, several times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not one of these brand ambassadors that just gets paid just to sort of talk about it. It's never visited the, the distillery in there. I know what the answer is to that is. So no, it's uh, to be fair. I was a bit on the way around because, like, like I say, Chem Reserve is legitimately the one that got me to understand rum. It and Chem's original is my favourite. But I understood it better when I first went in uh, 2014. I think it was. So, because like you say, you, it, it's just like if you go to to anywhere, you're like, oh, all the Google images makes it look amazing. Oh, look at the blue sky, all the rum. Oh, it better be fantastic. Oh, we'll have to try some rum I have in my bag. You, you kind of, you don't want to believe them, but if you start bringing up the, the, all the selfies on the beach itself or the missile, or you're drinking rum straight from the cask, oh, you've been. All right, all right I, I, you actually know what you're talking about. Amazing, amazing. Is it? Have you been to many other distilleries out there? The Caribbean. Yes. I know you've. Been, um, yeah, I've been to all four of them in Barbados, which includes the West Indies. Oh wow! Uh, I've been to Appleton Estate in Jamaica and Hampton Estate as well. Unfortunately, Worthy Park wasn't open at that time. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry. I don't know whether you can see the comments. Oh, this this is Grant. I'll, I'll run. Good. We'll do questions in a bit. I'll look at them. But so, how would St. Lucia distillers differ from, say, let's just take one of the Barbados, like WIRD or, or whatever, or Mount Gay? How does St. Lucia distillers differ in that sort of respect? Is there a difference? Is it just a different way of life? I'd say it's more down to what we do. What sort of defines St. Lucia distillers is obviously we haven't got a GI. So we're not, uh, you know, strict in terms of our rules and regulations compared to obviously what we're seeing in Barbados, obviously what Jamaica has now as well. Um, so we have a lot more flexibility, but we are also the only rum distillery on the island. And I can't see any, you know, a second one popping up anytime soon. So we do have that flexibility in that. The style is very, very similar to Barbados in my mind. You know, it's, uh, it's you know, I think it's like the Irish whiskey of the rum world. You know you got some good oh, stuff, but it's not gonna be you know too peaty or too, uh, too sea salty or anything like that compared to that versatile that Scotland do, even though it's the same category. So in my mind, it's definitely not Jamaica. You know, it's definitely not Guyanese. It hasn't got the the, the light thinness of Cuba or, or or any of the Spanish styles, uh, and obviously, especially against the French with Apricot, it's it's you know nowhere near anything like that either. 
But if you did a blind tasting with something like Mount Gay or St. Nicholas Abbey, you will be hard pressed to be thinking, it could be, but oh, it might not be. You start to think about it a bit more. So there's a lot more similarities in my mind with Barbados and St. Lucia. Wow. Okay. So that's that's quite good knowledge because I I mean so I've I don't know why I've kind of given not St. Lucia a wide berth but it's just not been an obvious kind of, and I think for a lot of us in my community as well it's not that obvious kind of pick but actually getting into like the legacy and the forgotten casks we try and keep it under fifty quid to like wow these these are some really good liquids and I tell you what um, Dave Brady down at um, Black Parrot. Got Sorry. me when and Garine, uh, Big G was there with us as well. Got me onto the 1931s, whatever the, the special <laughs> editions they've got there behind the bar. And I was like, Jesus Christ, they are good. They are yeah, really, really, really good. good stuff there. I, mean, yeah. I think that's, that's the cool thing that what you've got to remember is pre 2016, anything to do with St. Lucia distillers, whether it was Bounty, Gem Reserve, Abel Rodney, the 1931s, they weren't on social media. They weren't actively pushing it outside of St. Lucia. You know, the, yes, you had, uh, you know, the, the odds, you know, press release when we won an award uh, with, you know, IBUSC or San Francisco. But some people don't see awards as the thing. It's It could be very trade-driven. So from a consumer point of view, it was, it was word of mouth. You know, it's like yeah. seeing uh, English Harbour from Antigua. It's some amazing liquid. It's, it's just from Antigua. And nobody knows Antigua rums. You know, compared to Jamaica or Barbados or Martinique. So it was looking back at it now, especially benefit of hindsight, there's a lot of missed opportunities in my mind of how we could have got out there a bit better in terms of, oh, you know what, we should have just got Bounty out a couple of years prior when the rum boom was starting <laughs> to really expand. Uh, but it, actually, we've done it in a better way because Bounty, for example, launched in the UK in 2018 through Notting Hill Carnival, because it's a carnival style of rum. Uh, so, in a way, we, maybe we, it was a good job that we sort of seeded St. Lucia rums in and not smashed all three out brands at the same time. So, Hope you like it. So, talking about Bounty in particular in here, because the stories I've heard is, we all know St. Lucia um, Chairman's Reserve Original was, it was probably the first St. Lucia rum. That I know of to hit the UK shores, and I'm I'm talking sort of early 2000s from my recollection of when I saw it on uh, July the 10th, 2004. Right. Okay. Cool. That's that, I was going to say about 2005. That's when supply lists and all that started. But why, if this is the rum of the people, bounty? Why did we start seeing at chairmans instead of bounty? Chairmans mainly was the sort of first exported brand because of its offering of Ada Pot still. And also to have something that would showcase what St. Lucia was to the rest of the of the world. You know, we're talking the likes of Sweden, North America, obviously the UK as well. Um, but it had to have a premium offering because you've got to remember back in 2004, we, we didn't have half the things you've got behind you, Steve. You know, we, we, we had... <laughs> we didn't even have cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's no slight... Against these brands at all, but we had the Bacardis, Havana Clubs, we had the, the um, you know, Matusalems. They were all sort of your go to rums that weren't upside down in optic as well. You know what I mean? So it was, is there a call for something that could be an alternative for that? Especially the lack of understanding of what a pot still could do as well. We, as a colony, expect that slight pot still, that Jamaican funkiness or the, the complexity of what Mount Gay could do. So Cherm Reserve was developed for that sort of export market. And obviously it's grown since then with the spiced, the reformulation of the white label, uh, obviously the different ways the bottles look now as well compared to that first um, batch. So it's it's developed, but it got people to understand what St. Lucia Distillers was. And then we decided to bring Bounty over to the UK, only, literally only a handful of years uh, ago. So 15 years of Reserve, just... basically. Wow, I was, I was just gonna. I've got questions about chairmans, but what I think we're we'll doing, not I'm not talking like in the next few weeks. We'll get you back on. We'll do a chairman's reserve because I've got so many questions about chairmans. But so the bound, which was let's let's go bounty. Which one do you want to talk about first? Is there an obvious one? Uh, I mean, to be fair, the white label. Which, right, uh, okay. it's, it's the one that always gets forgotten about. It's 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 a white rum. Everyone thinks it's not going to offer too much. I mean, I, I understand 
you know, it's it's a mixer. Would you drink it straight? Well, to be fair, let's find out. But uh, I, I, it, it can be uh, glossed over easily. I tell, I tell you what, it's a brand. It, it's like for a back bar brand. I mean, let's be honest; these are accessible price rums. They're all what twenty two, twenty three quid, maybe slightly cheaper, cheaper yeah. for the, the industry. I get that, but you know, they look fantastic on the on the back bar or, or something like that. They're a cracking brand like that. It is, but, and it's obviously it's our own bottle mold as well. It has the bounty motif on the front. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see it from mine, but be, these are the old bottles that I still uh, have here that I use for samples. It's just a bottle. Uh, but obviously the label's not changed too much. But to be honest with you, back in 20, I think 2017, Bouncy had its sort of rebrand. So what was Bouncy like now used to be called Cristal. The Bounty Spice used to be called Quill Spice. Uh, the Bounty Dark was, was brand new anyway. Uh, and obviously, Bounty Coconut was the same. So it, it's been like a, bringing all these different brands that St. Lucia Stillis has made over the years under the Bounty banner One. and rebranded it right. as, as a whole instead. So the white rum, 40% ABV. Yep. 100% Column still. 100%. 100% I do like my column you. stills. You right, say that again. It's never seen a pot still in its life. Never seen a pot still. That, that's, well, I mean, to be fair, it's in the same room, but still, it's, it's never so, seen it. Now, this is quite interesting because, I don't know, we all get different tasting notes, but I get sort of... I, my, I had a little sip of all these before you came on. And the first notes I got off this was like coffee chocolate. It very much reminded me of like El Dorado three-year-old, that sort of vibe. But Absolutely. with the light... But with the lightness of a column still compared to uh, like a blend or a pop. I mean, I love column stills. This is, I really like this. To be fair, I know exactly what you mean. You get that slight cocoa element. And I also get that tropical sort of fruit note. Um, mm. But not the sort of generic tropical fruits. I get like guava a little bit. It's uh, um, it's soft, but it's not stone fruits. It's kind of like you just get the flesh bits. It's some sort of water-based ones as well. I definitely get the guava on the back palette. Definitely get the guava on the back palette. There's uh, before we go any further. There's a couple of there's a couple of questions piping up there. Uh, Al, Ho, I don't know whether you can see the questions. If you want to answer them as you see them, go for it. But Al Ho's talking about Tesco's. Was it in Tesco's? I don't think so. Was it? No, it's never been in Tesco. Uh, Karen, what would you mix the white with? We'll talk about that in a second. We'll come on. And there was G. Uh, Tom Scott. Tom's basically dissing the image. <laughs> He's not. Uh, is Bounty's image labelling intentionally match to, intentionally to match its low price level? I don't think it does, to be honest. No, I, I mean it's quite classy. It's, I think it would have done back back in the day. Um, like I said it yeah. was a reason why we swapped it from Crystal to Bounty. Um, Microsoft Paint was probably used, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> there's a good... and just and just one last one uh because this and this will probably tie into more chairman's reserve and more admiral rodney's and stuff but we heard about the um this is big g we heard about cane your experiment with cane juice uh is that correct not yeah so yeah. we have about well, we had 15 acres of our own sugar cane plantation in the distillery grounds uh what you got to remember is sugar cane plantations in st louis uh, we're around about 200 years between 1760s and 1960s. Uh, wasn't as big in terms of the yield that we're able to get compared to, you know, Martinique or Barbados or Jamaica, but we still made enough, you know. Um, but obviously, back then it was mainly just for bulk runs, we, there was none of our own brands. Um, and obviously, the formation of St. Lucia Distillers back in 72. Uh, obviously, that was 10 years after the last sort of sugar cane plantator um, shut. Um, everything sort of swapped over to bananas, which is why bananas is one of the biggest exported produce on the island. Uh, bats ah. have in, in Tesco, if that helps. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but no, we, we Laurie Barnard, who was the gentleman who, or his father created St. Lucia Distillers, Dennis, um, he was the reason why we have rum from that family. Um but Laurie was basically the, the forefront in terms of how we perceive St. Lucia Distillers now. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2012. So I actually never had the opportunity to meet him. Um, he, he passed away of cancer. 
but his legacy is still is, is here. And obviously, he's the face on the front of the Chairman's Legacy Bowl. Oh, yes. I, th I think, yes. I know what you, yes, I know who you're talking about now. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. So it was, just, um, just he, he basically sort of wanted to reintroduce our own trivia game. You know, we, we, it's, it's all molasses based. There's no alcohol sort of elements in Bounty. Uh, originally from Guyana, it's now from uh, Panama and a little bit of Dominican every once in a while. Um, but ultimately, we, we 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 can't we can't be sustainable. So we decided to 15 acres. It's now 10 because we just built a couple of new warehouses. Uh, but 10 acres, but the yield's too small to, to actually be self sufficient with our own molasses. Um, but obviously, we're using the sugarcane juice into our Chemers Legacy Bowl. So wow. we're slowly incorporating Laurie's last bit of legacy, shall we say? Um, but it it won't be anywhere, you know. Using in bounty or the rest of the chairman's core range anytime soon. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cheers for that. Right, my lot have had a good taste now. We've got loads of tasting notes here. We've got caramel, we've got uh, light caramel nuttiness. I thought coconut, chocolate, I'm hiding one, whatever that says. Uh, coconut nutty, uh, coconut almond backbone, toffee, white chocolate caramel. Uh, what's the ABV? This one's 40. There is 40. some slight different ones. We've got 43 here somewhere. The, the dark, I know it's 43. Yep. Um, and the coconut's different. But yeah, I'll, I'll mention that as we go along. This one's 40% uh, ABV. Yeah, some, some cracking tasty notes. So drinking-wise then, I mean, there's going to be the obvious ones for this, but how how would you drink this? Is it a daiquiri rum? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite yeah. a clean daiquiri. Um, you know, I'd, it, everyone would say they have their own favourites. Um, you know, to be brutally honest, Plantation Freestyle was the one that got me onto daiquiris. Well, this is not plantation food stuff. This is a very clean, slightly more, um, like, like I say, tropical sort of focus towards it. Um, probably obviously it lacks a bit of weight in comparison to Chairman's White label, but that's in my mind down to that ABV. Uh, you know, Chairman's White is 43%. It's a little bit drier as well. Bounty is a bit more silky smoothness in, in comparison. Um, so, yeah, makes a great daiquiri. Um, to be really honest, I just like it with ginger ale. Yeah, I was. That, that's where my head's going. Ginger, sort of ginger ale, not ginger beer. I wouldn't do ginger yeah, beer with that. Yeah, ginger, ginger ale. Beer, ginger ale. Uh, it's actually got a little bit of vibes for me for a rum and coke as well. To be fair, it's it's got that sort of caramel oh, yeah, thing yeah. that I like. I've just but seen yeah. that Chris has bought Stratford Citrus as well, uh, which I, yes. I did try. Obviously, Stratford Soda's sponsored Rum Fest this year, uh, and obviously, very kindly sent me some bottles to. So I think I did a rum and a couch. And I think I did Bounty White with one of the Stratfords, and it could have been the Citrus. Yeah, nice. Kate, Kate and Dan are a big part of this community. They come on. They're just moving house at the moment. But what I'll what I'll do after you finish that, we do uh, the Stratford soda tasting every night. I've got I've got loads in the fridge, so I'll go, kind of do these with the Stratfords afterwards. Um, but yeah, I, I love the brand, cracking brands. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's belting that is. And I mean, price point is, I think I looked just before, it's your prices at home, literally about 21, 22 pounds, I think. Yeah. Which yeah. if you, if you're putting it up against plantation three stars, it's kind of like for like, if you like, it's definitely a, probably a couple of quid cheaper than El Dorado three year old. Um, yeah. Cheaper yeah, than Dorley's. Two years old as well. Oh yeah. So that's it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's two years. It's ex bourbon barrels. I mean, we, we use, um, you know, a variety of different bourbons as well. Well, ex-American, because we do throw in the odd Jack Daniels in there. Uh, but JD, Jim Beam, Buffalo Trace, Woodbury Reserve, you know, there's lots of different options for us. Like I said before, we, we're not tied to a certain uh, use of the brand or certain uh, style that we have to always use. Um, I mean, to be fair, there's no age statement on the bottle. You know, it's not Bounty White two-year-old. I can yeah. say for two-year-olds because we're transparent, but ultimately, as long as our master blender, Denny, um, is able to sort of get exactly the same every single time, then we're good to go. Lovely. I'm just going to pick up on. I'm going to pick up on something here because this is quite of an interesting one as well. Quick, before I dive into it, what's the percentage of uh, pot versus column on Chairman's White? Do you know? Do you know the breakdown? Is it? Is it? Is that? Yeah, there's definitely pot still in. Remember it. if I'm allowed to say it, so I'll tell you or not. <laughs> All right. No, no, don't, don't worry about that then. But there's, well, there's I, definitely I, pot I, still. I, I'll tell you what it is. Chairman's white label is more pot over column. Right. That's all. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's, we're talking a, more a dash of column over pot, shall we say? Right. That, no, that's cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, Scott's just put on here. Uh, Scott prefers 
uh, the bounty white over chairman's. The Scots kind of in my camp. He likes he re- he's got his love for the column still white rums, especially like the um, he likes the Floyd the County four year old. But we kind of noticing the guys that are going further down the rum journey. They can there's certain camps of blended. There's certain camps of pot, and there's certain camps of column still. And it's really fascinating to see people up picking up on. Oh, I prefer this over that because of that that whole pot versus column thing. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's. Throws people. I, I get why. Pardon me. Uh, you know, a pot still kid. It offers more flavour. Offers yeah. More more a rounder approach. A bit more. Yeah, I've got a rum in my mouth. But and, and I can I can see it. I can understand that it, historically that's what we would go for. But also, Bacardi has been the global leader, and they don't have a pot still that they're using. I can't smoke it. So <laughs> we've actually been drinking it without knowing the context of what was ma- making it in the first place. So. Yeah, I think once people understand that and aren't afraid to try something like Bacardi Cala Blanca straight from the bottle, they'll drink Bounty Rum straight from the bottle, they'll drink the Florida Candy straight from the bottle, the Havana Club three year, and actually see what those flavors could actually offer. You know, it's it, even though it's only two years in our minds, two years is quite a long time in a barrel that's yeah. in a hot humidity uh, climate as well, making it this magic. You know, it's a long time to gain some flavours. Are they, it's probably a daft, stupid question as well. Are they all aged on St. Lucia? There's, there's none aged elsewhere. Yeah, sorry, that was probably yeah, a, yeah. a dumb, all, stupid question. All, 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 all done on England. There's nothing's cool. taken away to, you know, be, be continentally aged or anything <laughs> like that. Right, cool. Anything else we've missed on the white? Any any other pearls of wisdom that you want to? Um, what I would also say is that, obviously, we, we filter this one. You know, it's, it's clear. Right. Uh, yeah. It's carbon filtered, uh, but we don't add anything. So anything that everyone's getting right now is 100% natural. You know, we don't add sugar, for example. And that that's across the whole solution range, isn't it? Every, oh, every, every oh, bar and the spiced, yeah. Bar and the spiced, yeah. There's, so they're all pretty... And the coconut, obviously, that's coming in here. Yeah. But yeah, they're all... <laughs> sorry, yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing with solution distillers. There's no uh, additives or whatever you want to call it in that sense. So that, that is lovely. I like that. That's really good. I think for an entry level white rum, we were having a chat beforehand is how would these brands, how would this stack up against like your plantations and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what these guys think tomorrow and all that. So, right. That's, that's the white. So gold would be next. Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. yeah gold's yep. The next. Um, Cause the interesting thing about the gold, Steve is it's the white. It's, it's still two years old. Oh, okay. So this is the unfiltered version. Essentially, sort of. so yeah, it's, it's a slightly different blend between obviously the actual use of the stills, um, but ultimately it's still two years old. Uh, hang on a bit. Sorry. So it's is it? It's a different. It's not the white rum unfiltered. It's slight. It's a two year old, but slightly different blend. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Like I say, it's, it's, it's expert barrels. We have four diff- available to us on a consistent basis. So as long as we have something that's on average two years old, we're good. Otherwise, we're just basically getting Bounty White in a in a gold-looking bottle. Now, this tastes completely and utterly different to the white. It's such a different taste on it. The the taste. So just to read you the tasting notes on the back of the p- bottle, gang. Uh, fresh tropical citrus tones... Uh, warm meringue hint of orange blossom with the smooth yellow texture and vibrant character bounce that's the white one um oh it actually says rum and tonic fresh juices soda cola and rum and tonic on there oh, uh, you, the you, gold you one ruined me segue. oh dave sorry mate uh the, on the back here of the gold uh warm butterscotch with dried fruit flavors rich raisin fruit hint of toasted vanilla bean uh, and I'll, I'll leave the segue till later. But this tasted so different before I went live. No, you're absolutely right. It's, I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, the filtration of, of the carbon uh, would strip away some of the characteristics, but not enough to change it completely. But the good thing is that this offers, in my mind, actually quite a lot for a two year old room. You know, even though I just said that before that. Two years can be quite a long time compared to what the Bounty Dark is, compared to you know an Eldorado 21 gear. 
VC is actually quite a quite a lot coming out of it. It's a lot of complexity, and the vanilla the vanilla pods especially is the one that really strikes me. It offers that mm. slightly smoother sort of approach. It's not too dry either, because I again it can put people off. You know, it's a two year old rum. You don't think it's one for sipping. It flippy well is. <laughs> All right, for you lot in the comments, uh, you lot watching at home, a quick th quick thumbs up uh, for those of you that would sip that neat. Um, and I don't mean as like a, your, a 12 year old replacement. I just mean how, how many of you could actually sip that neat without the need to mix it. That's what I want to see. Quick thumbs up at home from that. Uh, we've got smells similar, but taste is richer. Honey, yeah. butterscotch, vanilla, getting honey on the nose, stronger nose. Uh, I get more burn off the gold, what Nick just said. And I, I can see why he says that. It does have that slightly more, especially mid-tongue, slightly more tingle dryness. That's more down to the, obviously, lack of filtration, but ultimately, it's the use of barrels. You know, it's they're all ex-bourbon. They're not all reconditioned. It's straight as it comes. As long as they're not, you know, full of holes, we'll use them. It's just stopping that impact. It's like having a, a flash bit of toast. Yeah. I mean, that is that is the, I mean this was when when I tasted these properly down uh where the hell was that? That was probably oh it was in Bibe, I think. I think it was in Bibe. It was definitely in Bibe yeah. when we had the well, I'm assuming it's next to the dark one, and that kind of blew me away a little bit. But the gold one was just like, wow, that's pretty damn decent. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That, say it's that for me is an all rounder. Yeah, the, the, the flexibility you've got, I mean, obviously we've, we've mentioned it briefly already in terms of uh, tonic water. You know, it's you can look at something like Bounty Gold and think, oh, it's two years old. It's going to be needing a mixer. You know, you, you, you do expect raw. You, you, ex you don't expect too much flavour profile, especially somewhere to sip and enjoy. Um, you might shot it on a night out, for example, because it's something a little bit different, but... Sitting down and actually appreciating what our guys and girls are doing in St. Lucia make something like this uh, it can be seen. But to then understand that, yeah, this makes a really good rum and coke. But as we've already mentioned, even with the white label, tonic water does actually offer a, a whole different aspect to something like this. We do a lot of uh, the welcome drinks now with Bounty that involve tonic. You know, something like Fever Tree or Double Dutch or Frankenson's, you know, any sort of especially skinny, in my mind, the lighter calories. I was, it, ju I was just going to say, I was just going to say, because a lot of run brands do go for the skinny or refreshingly light or whatever you want to call it. I was just going to ask that, but... In, in my mind, it offers more fragrance. You know what I mean? Especially right. the white. Uh, yeah. those, those tropical notes, you know, even the Bounty Gold, it's, it's, in my mind, it's got like kind of ripe sultana fruit notes on the nose. So add a little bit of tonic water. It's like adding a couple of drops of water to a, a single malt whiskey. It just opens up a little bit more, accentuates some of those more nuances. And you're like, this is a two-year-old rum, man, and getting more from it because it's added tonic water, which freaks people out anyway, adding tonic to rum and it's not gin. I'm, but um, I think it was Revolutionary Cuban would... who were the first to put a rum and tonic on their menu. It's it's becoming a thing. Without, without like, brands... Alliance, and I, and I know your certain brands and all this stuff. What would be because all tonics, and I've done this time and time again, all tonics taste completely and utterly different. In your mind, if someone wanted to get into rum and tonic, which kind of tonic brand showcases the rum the best? Is it Fever Tree? Is it Double Dutch? Is it something else? Because I'll be honest, I'm not a tonic connoisseur. I've I've got a few cans of Mediterranean here, and that's it. I did do Franklin's and Sons. So I'm um, I like Franklin's, but I, I, Double Dutch was the one that got me to understand rum and tonic. Right, Fever Tree got me to understand that lighter tonic is better for certain brands or certain bottlings. So again, it's like the whole lambs got me on, on, onto rum. Chem Reserve got me to understand it better. Um, you know, I've, I've never really had it with Mediterranean tonic or elderflower tonic or. Or some of the other crazy flavors you can get these days, um, but I'm actually intrigued to give them a go because we're in the new era of trying different things these days, yeah. aren't we? So and, I, and it's it's a, it's a hard it's a hard question to answer, really. But um, I need I need to get some tonics. I need to get some local. I don't think I've got any here at all. <laughs> what about the old um, Seckford mixes? Because they're sort of 
They, they yeah. sort of. To be fair, I, I am not dying into them too often to really get a, a good opinion on the brand yet. Um, mainly just for the lack of uh, any sort of presence up north. Uh, obviously, I know they're big in London, but I, I've just not really had the, the time to sit down and really sort of uh, get my head around them. I did get certain these, to be fair. Do some sh shameless promotion of a certain brand. <laughs> oh. um, I got these from Licks here. Oh, week. yeah, the lads. What's that so one? That's a, is that a new one? Well, so the thing is, you got rhubarb and ginger. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, right. Yeah, I've got most of them here. Obviously, classic Indian, which I'll be intrigued yeah. to give a go with uh, the white and so on. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like, I've got a few, world. I've got a few tonics. I've got the elderflower. Hey. I've got the blood orange. <laughs> I've got the so, rhubarb. Yeah, so it's, but I, again, they're all tonic, and it's that's low in calories, sweet star, and a spicy finish. So, yeah. I mean, rhubarb and ginger could probably work quite well with Bounty White Label. Do, uh, do you see? Without getting off topic too much, do you see that as a trend in Manchester or, or not? Like the whole rum and tonic, is it is it becoming a trend? It's certainly not that. That's why I ask. It's not anywhere close to where I am. I I wouldn't say it's a trend, but I'd say that it intrigues people to give it a go. Um, we did. I say we. I did uh, in Chester and Manchester a couple of weeks back. Uh, obviously, we we promote a lot with the Saint Lucia Tourist Board, and they were doing their, the tourist board were doing their showcasing across the UK. Uh, obviously, the islands, uh, all different resorts, all the different activities, and obviously ourselves. You know, you can go and visit the, the distillery and book, book yourself onto a tour. Um, and we said, obviously, we'll bring some chair and preserve, but, uh, you know, let's they say, oh, let's, let's do a Mai Tai. It's like, we could do a Mai Tai. Um, or, for a little bit of an ease and something a bit different, why don't we do a walk and drink because of rum and tonic? And I thought, let's give it a go. So I got some Fever Tree cans. Um, and we did, especially the Manchester one, I think it's maybe 80, 90 in attendance. And some came back for a second one because wow. they weren't expecting it to, to be. It was only a single, me single measure, 25 mil, and just one can. So both into a glass, uh, sprig of mint, a uh, slice of orange. And it was just, it looked great. It, it worked. It blended well. And uh, it got people to think, that's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, again, we, we think it's going to be bitter. And tonic is, it's quinine. It's it's going to have, it's a bitter agent. But it works. And people came back for more. Interesting. Need to need to do this. It's something I've completely overlooked, apart from a couple of times. I'm and that's a new video of here, Steve. I, I bet, yeah, definitely. We need to get on it. We need to get on it. Mate, that is delicious. There's, there's lots of love coming in for this. Uh, and I think Tom... Uh, just about sums this up. He's up near you, actually. He's Barry. Uh, he, I don't know if there are many other rums at the price point that are as good as Sipper is that. I think that, is, that is pretty damn decent. That is that is lovely. It's like a. I keep going back to it. I keep. I, I, I'm not bored of it. If you know what I mean. After a couple of sips, I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's this? I like that. It it does develop definitely. Mm. I mean, to be fair, it's gone from my glass already, so that's already a good sign. <laughs> right then, number three. Well, I was going to say normally the dark would obviously be the kind of go-to next one, but I go spice next. Cool. Which brings me on to which you'll probably answer as well. I did see a question about five, ten minutes ago about the spiced, and I know what the question is without even looking at it, but go on, talk us, talk us through the spiced. So obviously, from a Saint Lucian rum point of view, Chairman Spice is the is the main one that a lot of people will be recognisable for. Obviously, it's widely available. Um, but, but the main thing in terms of Chairman's and Bounty is that it's fresh. You know, Saint Lucian is a spice island. You know, if you if you go to the Castries Market in the capital city, you will be hard pressed not to find a stall that's selling spices. You know, in little in little bags. Um, you know, fresh from the, their own homes, fresh from their own farms. Um, and nine times out of ten, under the table, you'll also have their own homemade spice rum as well. So it's it's such a huge part of our St. Lucian culture. Um, so it, it made natural sense for us to have our own spice rums, both within Chem and Reserve, and obviously what used to be called Quiol uh, is now obviously now Bounty Spiced. But they are two very different blends because... Bounty Spiced is still column still only, where Chevy Reserve is 
Potts and Colin. And I also, love this. Yeah. This is so easy. Yeah. Also, Bounty Spice doesn't have as many uh, added favorites um, mature than infused in competitive chairmans as well. There's only right. Couple. Okay. Right. Okay. I think I think that was what the question was going to be. I say I didn't read it. I just saw spiced and chairmans, and I'm assuming the question was going to be how similar is the spice blend to chairmans. I'll go back and look at that later. But no, I'm I assuming that's, that's what it was. the same. You're right. It's. It, I mean, it's one of those when you see. Any spiced or any flavoured rum that comes from the same distillery on the same islands, you do think, well, what's is there going to be a big difference? In me, in my mind, yeah. And I was actually speaking to a friend of mine who is it, it, not in the industry. He just loves his rum. Uh, and he's quite into Foursquare, as a lot of people are. Um, but actually quite like the Foursquare Spiced. And he compares the Foursquare Spiced to Bounty Spiced because it's a little bit lighter it's a little bit drier. Oh. Uh, it doesn't offer, obviously, the richness that a lot of spice rums can do with the added sugar. Um, but you, you, you get the individuality of the flavours. I was like, yeah, to be fair, it's... I mean, that's two very different brands in terms of uh, what they what they intend to offer. But, yeah, yeah there's, I can see where it's coming from, definitely. It's... Um, yeah, I'd say the Foursquare... Yeah, it's Foursquare Spice now. I'd say the Foursquare's got a lot more drier, cinnamony bite to it if you know what i mean than this yeah. there is a tiny bit of sugar in this yeah, yeah more, no? more, more is preservative uh obviously because right. travels across the across the world yeah so same with chairman spice it's there not because we want to make it sweet but to be it's like having a jam or a marmalade so you still get the freshness yeah. of the flavors it's just there so it doesn't spoil I, th I think that's the thing to sort of, yeah, exactly, exactly that. I think that's the thing to sort of point out is it, we'll emphasize it again. This is not a flavor compound that's gone into there. This is actually real life spices in the bottle. So you kind of need something with it just to kind of make it drinkable, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah, I mean, you're basically yeah. drinking fresh spices, you, you, you're going to have. I mean, to be fair, the base is is this. It's Bounty Gold. It's, it's another two-year-old right. rum. Um, so you, you know you've got a, a, a good rum as its base already. Still 40% ABV, so that takes the ABV box in a lot of countries. Um, but it's essentially, it's infused with vanilla and cinnamon. Uh, macerated Rikia Grande as well, which is uh, an aphrodisiac. So I'll be interested to see the comments of how the night's going to go. Is that the Bois? I can never say that I can't pronounce stuff for shit, but is that the Bois Bandy? What, Bois what, Bandy what's yeah. the. But say it again. Bois Bandy. Bois Bandy. I can't say shit. I, I call it Orgy. <laughs> I mean, Orgy. To, to so, be fair, if, if you speak to anyone in St. Lucia, I say it wrong. But I, I say a lot of things. Obviously, it's. it's uh, well, what do you call it? It's an accent thing in my mind. Yeah. So, vanilla, cinnamon. Bra, no, it's not Bra Bandy, but whatever the hell it is. What's yeah, it? Uh, what's the real name for it? What do you call it? Uh, well, you got the, the Latin name is Rakia Grande. Rakia Grande. Okay, and they're infused in the barrel. Is that right? Or infused in this in the barrel for yeah. different um, lengths of time? Cool. Same. Do we know? It's a handful of uh, sorry, handful of months. So it's not too long, and not each one of them goes at the same time it's all obviously depending on the impact yeah. of the flavor that we need and again <laughs> also you've got to remember that climate change is a thing so it's not always the same every single time i've got i've got mummy barman here who's obviously perked up for it for a chat oh she's got a bloody sherry glass what what, what what are you trying the spiced she's whispering give it give the royal hand she did she run you on half screen so you need to be here for the royal hand no here here you need to be here i mean you still can't see her no, come on right here you know, look, that's my hand, just there. Come here, give us your hand. I'm not. Oh, flipping hell, she'll never out. come on. She's a guzzler, this one. She's got a stick, she's got a banging headache. She's not drinking tonight, and she wants a spiced drumlet. Look at her. Well, yeah. she, she's off out later, that's why. <laughs> she's off out playing bingo. <laughs> so, spices I've just were infused in different. Uh, got Scott's comment name. I have to pin that one to the top. It's a great one. Go on. Well, well, well. Uh, my sample she... showing the missus is the best 30 seconds she's ever had. <laughs> I won't, I won't, uh, <laughs> brilliant, good old Scott, <laughs> bless him, 
Bless him, bless him, bless him. So this is lovely. So spices infused at different times, obviously, because, you know, if you put them all at the same time, you know, you're just going to get to a point where vanilla will infuse a lot quicker than sort of cinnamon and all that sort of thing. Exactly. So we, we get it. We get it. it. And obviously, I, I understand a lot of people won't really know what Ikea Grande actually would taste like. It's, it is a bark, um, but it's it offers a sort of flavor leaf, uh, sorry, flavor profile of bay leaf. So you get that slightly more earthiness approach towards it, but also a little bit greener at the same time. Okay, that's interesting. Because I've always just said it's the, the bark of the Bois bandy tree or whatever, and, that, and that's as far as my knowledge goes of that sort of stuff. I did. I have heard the aphrodisiac, but that was purely I've heard all that because of the chairman's reserve spice. You know, that's that's where that sort of came from. I think that came from you, actually, a couple of years ago, but... Um, yeah, yeah this it's, is... it's, it's essentially it's a, it's a dialed down version of chairman spice in a way. Chairman's obviously offers things like orange peel, there's lemon peel in there, there's almond, there's nutmeg, um, where bounty is a little bit more stripped down. It's just the vanilla. It's just the um, by bande. It's just the cinnamon, and that's pretty much it. But also, it still offers this solution style. You know, the the, the addition of by bande. It's not in. Really Really many of the commercially available spice rooms, you know, it's it sort of defines what Saint Lucian spice is. So that's why it's in both. I mean, for me, the big takeaway for that is, uh, would I have picked if I had tasted it? Would I have picked that that was Column Steel? Um, I'm at advantage. I knew it was Column Steel coming into this. I knew it was Column Steel ages ago because she told me. Um, but I think it's that naturally lighter. Most spiced rums that you taste are going to be blends. They are going to be. Well, let's be honest, a lot of spice drums come out of DDL, Demerara or Guyana, whatever you want to call it. So they are that they have got that sort of big, huge blend of sort of pot going in there as well. Whereas this is just a lovely light without being sickly sweet or overly spiced. It's just lovely, delicious. Yeah. Again, it's it's a sort of mixer uh, um, ginger ale over ginger beer because it, it does lack potentially the impact some people would expect for a spice rum. You know, it's not rich. It's not, uh, you know, deep and dark or bold. Uh, it's, it's still quite light. It's quite thinner. So a ginger ale would balance it and pair it better than uh, ginger beer, where it's, you're probably going to have a fiery ginger beer at bat as well. So you just drown it. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. Completely agree. That is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, a price point in that, again, I think that these, these are all roughly the same price, aren't they? I know, yes, the, the, I know. The, the so, white gold and spice should be about early twenties. Yeah, that's cool. I, I kind of reference Master of Bolt a lot. Master of Bolt are my guys that I kind of work with, so I always go for them. So yeah, I, from what I've seen, they're all roughly about sort of twenty one pounds to to this lot. So um, yeah, delicious. Now uh, we come on to the dark. I'd say dark next. Yeah, this for me. Uh, is my little I, I love dark rums anyway. I'm I'm a big sort of dark rum fan. And I'm quite interested to learn a little bit more about this one. Because obviously we know dark rums get added to caramel or molasses or dark sugar or whatever to give it that dark colour. But this sort of blew me away a little bit at Imbibe. Uh, it's a, it's and this is ball, yeah this forty three percent. So up till now you've had two four uh three four three at uh, three three forty percent ABVs, this is a forty three percent ABV. Yeah, so this this is the newest of the range. Uh, this wasn't, you know, a, a rebrand of a of a singular brand that we used to have. Um, and I was intrigued because this does involve Pottsville in the blend. Yeah. So it's it's anomaly on both the production. It's anomaly in terms of it. It's maybe have the history of the bouncy, uh, you know, since the seventies. But it, in my mind, when it first came out, it offers some more of the connoisseurs the reason to get into Bounty, if that makes sense. You know, it's as, as this whole thing is, it sort of introduces what Bounty and what you could do with the rest of St. Lucia Distillers. The ones who already love German Reserve or appreciate the flavours, this gets them what, to understand what Bounty actually is. Because, I don't know, we'd probably, you could instantly dismiss it. You don't know anything about it, so yeah, this one is essentially um, blend of obviously our column still, which is matured in three years in expert barrels. Uh, I've only got a six year old pot still in there as well, again, Asian expert barrels. 
this is properly up my street. I love this rub. Yeah. These are, oh my God. I'm getting so much off this. I'm getting, I'm getting that sort of peppery barrel aging, if you know what I mean, all that sort of dry spice barrel aging. But I'm also getting, I can't, I can't pick it. It's like, um, my head's going like appley pear kind of thing, but I, I don't know. It's it's kind of like a green yeah, it's fruit, like a, but I'm not a stew off the apple feel. Yeah, the, yeah, that's a great shout. Actually, <laughs> I hadn't quite got there yet. <laughs> yeah, that's a great shout. But it's it's great for Alton. Mm. This is delicious. Here we go. We've got people already coming in here. Cigar notes, aged tobacco, chocolate, cinnamon, and toffee. Longer in the barrel. Uh, I'm not sure when that comment come in uh, or how far they're, they're only a couple of seconds behind. But, yeah, so six years pot still and yeah, three six, years column. Yeah, six years pot, three years column. The blend itself is more column over pot. So it's like Cham Deserve flits round. Right, cool. Ooh, quince jelly. That's a shout. Sticky mm. toffee. What have, we, what have we got on the back of the bottle here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look out. Uh, softened by dark caramel for balance. Ah, okay. So this has got added caramel. Is that right? How does that kind of translate in there? With softened by dark caramel for balance and finesse. So we know, we do know that most dark rums have got sort of some... Oh, you're shaking your head, no? No, it's just a way they've written it. Okay. So there's no there's, there's, additives there's no, there's in this. no added caramel. It's it's the it's, wow. it's, it's the flavour profile that's gained upon it. So would this be like to get it? You know, I suppose it's not that dark actually. To be fair, no. It's I mean, not... obviously, if, if you put it up against, there's obviously a noticeable difference, but it's not the biggest. Right, I, can't yeah. get, I can't get that right there. <laughs> so ultimately, it's well, you're talking a, a blend of between three and six compared to a two-year-old. Yeah, you expect it's a good four years more, but it's not dark as in your know, lamb's dark or puss's dark or anything yeah. from Guyana, really. Which is this kind of intrigues me because, right? I, I pulled out the plantation there. Now we know because their plantation are quite open about it. We know plantation OD was like the experiment to see how I can never get the words right and in, in my mouth, but how less or whatever the word is, how much less they could get away with of caramel adding to the rum to give it that sort of dark rum vibes. Now, we know that that's got added caramel because they tell us, but it's still lighter than what the bounty is, which is kind of amusing, which kind of makes me think, well, hang on a minute, how how old is that? I know there's a, like a 16-year-old rum in your plantation ID or, so, or whatever it is. There's like a tiny minuscule amount of it. But that, so that is completely unadulterated, just aged. That's that's just the magic of the barrels itself. That is. I mean, don't, don't so these be... I, I I don't know what the char levels are within the barrels. Uh, it's it's ironically a question I've never had to ask. But <laughs> because we that, have... that was literally just what I was going to ask. Is how <laughs> you know how much charred would these barrels be? But okay, it's, you've got to remember that we have four different types, if not more, depending on obviously what our brokers can offer. So. One of them could be quite a light char, which would offer, obviously offer a bit more of a season note to it all. You could have one quite like an alligator char, which it's like a flash in the pan, but ultimately it's going to offer more richer, some more darker notes in both colour and the body of the flavour. But obviously our stills are, offer that impact as well. So it's, it, it's, it's more to do with the... Again, there's a reason why we don't put the age on the bottle. It's more to do with what those barrels impact can do. It's it's just down to the natural colouring of it all. This is fantastic. <laughs> I, I know I'm a little bit biased because I, I love this style of rum anyway. It's probably, you know, it's one of my go-to styles of rum because I just use it for cocktails. I use it for mixing. You know, I prefer, I do like my ginger ale, but I prefer ginger beer sort of thing. That if I can find a decent gi ginger beer that doesn't overly fizz or overly gas me. Um, so I'm, I'm, Straight away thinking like Stratford Soda Spiced with this, uh, something like that. You know, what you need to go on. Bit of coconut water. Oh, with that. Oh yeah. Oh, see, which one, the blue or the uh, blue or the white one? I've got the blue. I've run out of the white one. What's, what's, what's the brand? Is that Jack's Cocoa? Bitter. 
Vita, yeah. Yeah, just open the job. Oh, I'll Vita's out in a bit. Yeah. Yeah, Vita Coco. The, pro- the, the, the proper one, you know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> because again, because you get obviously that slightly silky smoothness. Um, the bouncy dark is obviously a, a rounder approach, but you still get the impact. It's it's not going to get lost, and obviously depending on how much coconut water you put in there, granted, but it's that silky smooth, impactful flavour profile. Oh, I love that. It's delicious, and also very just... Caribbean. So we've got we've got uh, not. Uh, black caramel. Where did we get to here? Uh, that's my favourite so far. The dark from K. A bit of smoke. Uh, there was. Where did I get here? There was something that just popped up in my head. Uh, oh, this one. More like Pam. This is Pam. Uh, more like whiskey for me. Uh, confirming I have my more like whis- more whiskey like for me. Confirming I may have preference for column. Okay, I think. Yeah, I can see where she's coming from with the. There's a lot more of those whiskey notes, you know. Naturally, the more it's left in the barrel, you're going to retain those impacts of what the barrel stage can do. Um, and again, you know, we, we have many different elements of whiskies. You know, Jack Daniels is a very different flavor profile to Jim Bean, which is very different to Woodford Reserve. So you're going to get more of that, um, those tanning notes coming through. I mean, to me, after a couple of sips, Bounty Dark does offer a slightly drier feel to it at the end. But it, and it lingers. You get a beautiful sort of aromas coming out of your mouth anyway. But you know you've had bouncy dark in your mouth. That's well that way. But yeah, it doesn't disappear. 100%. You know, and you, that's it. Does have that slightly, especially American styles of whiskey um, element coming from it. So yeah, I can see what she's coming. I we use. I don't know if you've seen it, but we use or I use, I should say, the Rum X app quite a lot uh, from the guys in Germany that sort of started it. It's t- kind of taking the world by the Rum World by storm. But there's, there's a bit on there about the finish, the short, medium, and long kind of finish. And I, I very rarely get a long finish. But do you know what? And don't get me wrong, I've got some big players here for long finishes. That is pretty damn long in the grand scheme of things for considering what it is. That just lingers and lingers for a long, long time. It does. Yeah. Which is the curveball. You know, it's, it's not bouncy gold. It's definitely not obviously bouncy white. They they offer some kind of a cleaner and slightly more sharper element towards it. Where Bounty Dark is like the big brother that just arrives mid conversation. You know, I'm here and I've got something a little bit different in me bag, uh, which is why it gets you know the tiki guys on board. It gets the the long connoisseurs who appreciate what Chairman's can do, what Aberodney can do in terms of the impacts of flavour. Um, but get someone to understand what bounty actually is. You know, it's it, like we said at the beginning, it's kind of the forgotten brand of St. Lucia Distillers. It's amazing. I, I can't, we'll get onto the coconut in a second, but I, I, I generally can't believe it's taken them that long to kind of get bounty out there because from what we tasted, I know it was all rebranded, all that, I get it, uh, and all that, but there's some fantastic stuff here. Really good. It just goes to show you, you know, people, people are kind of, what's the word, disregard brands and rums purely on price. They'll see, oh, it's about 20 more quid. Oh, I won't bother with that. I'll go to like a 30 quid rum. But these rums really do punch up against some of the some of the 30, 35 pound rums that I've got. It's some, even more, some of them. Hmm. That's Yeah, it's, 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 it's got a legitimate place on, on a bat bar for definite. Even if it's just a bottle for a weekend, you've got some, you know, friends coming round or you need a nice good, you know, base of rum punch that's, you know, offer some you know, real rich tropical juices to it. it. It hits the mark without thinking. I'll get another bottle of what every other brand has to offer. You know, this is what Tesco's got on offer. This is what uh, Flash Sale on Amazon. You know, Bounty Duck takes that box and it's something a little bit different, and it's not going to break the bank. Which is why we brought it into the UK. That is belting. So this is brand new. How how old is this? Is it, is it a year? A year? Or how old? Is it? As in available in the UK. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, both questions then. So how old is it, and then how long has it been available in the UK? Uh, it's been around since 2016, and we've had it in since 2017. Right. Uh, 2018, oh, okay. Sorry. The Dark? Oh, no, hang on. No, The Dark has been around that long? Yeah. Wow. I thought I thought this was genuinely, I thought this was, like, new, brand new. Never seen it or heard of it or anything before. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, what you got to remember is that when launched it at Nine Hill Carnival. Obviously, that's uh, August Bank Holiday. Uh, we obviously 
we launched it in the run up to Christmas. Uh, we started to obviously work with retailers. Um, and obviously, 2019, we built on that. It's, you know, Ian's Rum Fest, uh, obviously, my own Rum Fest as well. Uh, a handful of other things. I've been obviously very happy. What, National Rum Festival? Yeah. <laughs> so, for those, those of you just jumped in. Those those of you just joining, uh, Dave owns Manchester Rum Festival. That's that's it. Well, I know we have like different audiences three now. So Manchester Rum Fest is Dave. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Uh, dates coming soon for next year, FYI. Um, Bloody <laughs> crack on. <laughs> but uh, but yes. Yeah, so it, obviously, when COVID happened, and naturally, uh, although I was very lucky to still be able to work with the guys for the last or during those two years, especially in the first year of all the lockdowns, um, we naturally sort of focus on chairman because it was the strongest of the brands that we had in the trio of St. Lucia distillers. Uh, obviously we were working with a lot more like Waitrose. We did uh, the, you know, the, the, all the zoom tastings. So we're never really able to get it into the more independent retailers across the UK. Uh, and naturally obviously the bars and restaurants as well. Um, so we've so, so sort of delayed a little bit. And obviously, with the whole Spirit Bam launching in, in February, we've now been able to, you know what, this is our launch. You know, this is our reset. Uh, let's actually get it in front of people, which is why it's such a big thing to do Notting Hill Carnival this year. You know, we wanted the, well, so we didn't sponsor Carnival in terms of what Ray Neff did, for example, but we made sure we partnered up with the right people, both from a retail point of view, obviously, the likes of Trailer Happiness and Beachcomber as well. Um, so we, we wanted to make sure that a it fits obviously the brand styles of you know it's the spirit of Saint Lucia it's lifestyle it's carnival it's music it's food um, but ultimately making sure that not just London gets it we understand myself included don't live in London but we still have to get it in front of the right people so um, so yeah we, it's it's going to get to the next level you know we're doing a lot in Scotland right now as well. Uh, despite wow. how cold it could be, still appreciate the spirit of St. Lucia. So. We, we, we've got a couple of Scottish on here. Uh, Pam Pam is definitely from Scotland in here, so we're, we're up there, up in Fife. Uh, that's cool. I've seen some great comments coming up here. There's, this one's brilliant. This is Tom. I think this is nailed. Considering you get all of this range for about 110, 120 quid, it's brilliant value for all five. I think that's yeah. that. And then Nick's, this is a great comment as well. Uh, 100% of this price point, it's a mate's round rum without <laughs> without a massive compromise on taste. I don't think there is a compromise. I think it's, you know, all right, if you're going four squares and stuff like that, it might be a little bit of a compromise, but I don't rate four squares anyway. Right, let's say, uh, so we can sort of get you, because I know you're kind of on holiday or whatever, whatever I mean, it is. Let, let's get, let, let's, uh, let's, let's crack on with it. So very quickly, rum punches, ginger, uh, feisty ginger for me, Coke ginger. Plastic ginger. Rubber coke. It's not going to get drowned by any solar. So, um, yeah, again, versatile. Yeah, cool. Coconut. I know, I know there's a few people in here that are waiting desperately for this coconut. We've got a few coconut monsters in the house. <laughs> well, so, I mean, 20. So, we go. This is 25% ABV. I'll just clarify that before we go any further. It is. And we do say on the bottle, it is a rum liqueur. So again, we're transparent. Nice. It's not a rum flavored spirit in terms of we put in small writing. You know, it's it's liqueur. It's <laughs> we add sugar, but it is bouncy white. It's that space. Um, so when we when, when we distill this, obviously off our column still, so we're back onto Ooh. pure hundred percent column. Um, we obviously then infuse. Uh, um, actually fresh coconut you know so it's again we're not lacking fresh coconuts on the island of st lucia like we are with spices um so coconut extracts uh, obviously we then add sugars we macerate it at high strength so it in it in my mind infuses in the best way possible but retains flavor and then we dilute it to 40 uh, sorry to 25 percent so it's it, you know what if you make a, a rum punch or your own spice rum at home, you're gonna have, like, have an overproof rum. It's gonna be something that's gonna be high strength, so it can in, retain all of its flavors, preserve it, and then you start to add a bit of sugar to get it down to more desirable flavor profile in terms of approachability. That's exactly what we do with Bounty Coconut. 
you know, there's no no point in my mind to then start. Yeah, we uh, we use Bounty uh, White Rome. It's 40%. We then add some coconut and you get like a, 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 a hint of coconut coming through. What's the point of a coconut if you want to get a hint? You want to be able to taste, in my mind, a bit of coconut straight away. I mean, even when you open the bottle, you get coconut aromas. And it's like, that's, that's a cure, but I can smell it. And it's like you just siphoned off the top of a coconut and got the aroma straight away on its own uh, back. So, so when I sent the samples out to this lot a few weeks ago, or whatever it was, uh, I did the first lot. So I've got a couple of Europeans here. I do like two couple of weeks before everyone else. And I sent this out and I started doing it. I was like, Jesus Christ, the coconut just exploded out of the, uh, out of the bottle. It was just like massive. Hint. So this is actually real life coconut. Again, not a flavor compound, not uh, cordials or anything like that. This is proper coconut water. Delicious. 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 Obviously, then diluted with fresh spring water. Uh, and obviously, sugar to get it down to a 25% ABV. But um, in my mind, it's you're not, not chomping on it, if you know what I mean. You just sort of... It's, it's a silky smoothness. You know, it's not yeah. thin. You know, it's, it's a, there's a great uh, coconut rum from Martinique and uh, guys at Clermont, which is like that kind of coconut oil. Um, so a little bit thinner, a little bit drier as well. And we, but this, we did that, didn't we? Did we do that? You sent me that, didn't you? Did we possibly. do coconut? I forget what we did there. I don't know where it's gone. I can't remember now. <laughs> I think I think we did. Oh, but, yeah, it, was, it, it was a shrub, wasn't it? Shrub. Cane blue. Yeah, I can't see it, so it must be that. I've got the shrub, the cane blue. Yeah, ignore that. It wasn't the coconut at all. <laughs> it was Ash talking about the coconut. That's what it was. That would make sense, yeah. <laughs> but, Steve, I've got a question for you, though. Can Go. you still taste the rum? Sorry, you, you kind of broke up halfway through that. Oh, sorry. Can you still taste the rum? Yeah, 100%. That's all 100%. We That's all we need. 100%. Don't get me wrong, it is, it is quite sweet, but then, it, yeah. you know, it's it's a liqueur, it's going to be sweet. I think I think the official language spear liqueur is over 100 grams of sugar anyway in the EU. I think that's the official... I forget which way around it is. Is it 100? It's 200 grams to be... A f I, get, I get confused. What, whatever the bowl... What, uh, I don't know what they're called. The creme, the creme de fruits, creme de cassis and all that, has to be 200 grams in yeah. the EU. Uh, to be and to have the word liqueur, it has to be over 100 grams. So we know it's got quite a bit of sugar in there. But yeah, 100%. You're not going to confuse that for uh, a coconut flavored vodka or a coconut flavored whatever. You know, that's especially after tasting them all. You know, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's a shame, but it's maybe not full strength. You know, it'd be interesting to see what this would taste like at 40. Um, but we've got to understand that. Bounty is still there to be introduced to new, you know, to, to people who uh, have a new generation or maybe have never tried rum before, but obviously the, the likes of the Malibus of the world, the Dead Man's Fingers, Coconuts, you know, I'd, I'd rather get them on board from that. And Bounty is the next step in their journey than just bypassing us and uh, just retaining what they've always had from the, you know, their pubs or whatever. So. Mm. It's uh, and we, we get a lot of a lot of retailers obviously asking what is it similar to all these other basic coconut rums you get. I said, well, hey, we are a rum. It's just twenty five percent ABV. So um, and it's it, you're gonna get those flavors. I'm not saying it's you're gonna get rum straight away. I think I saw Nick in the comments like it's at the back of your of your throat. You know it's a rum, but it's not immediate. But you still know it's a rum, and I think that takes a big box for a lot of people. It's not just coconut sweetness like a sugar syrup so it's it, it offers a, a very different talking point which is why it's such a big focus for us as well despite being a liqueur it's it's still uh, something we we need to talk about yeah and i think i think that's a lot of things a, a, a big point that a lot of people miss as well you know at some level you as a brand as a distillery you know you could go all guns place and you could do well you know we'll do a 40 percent abv coconut rum we'll be special we'll do but at some level, it has to be a business decision. You know, you cannot convert people from, let's be honest, it's going to be Malibu. 
ninety uh, percent of people. You cannot convert Malibu drinkers to even Coco Canu, even Dead Man's Fingers is a stretch at forty percent ABV. You know because they're used to that sort of lower ABV stuff. So even putting Dead Man's Fingers in front of a Malibu fan is all oh, no, I don't want that. You know, so you've lost the sale straight away. So yeah. as a business, it makes total, complete and utter sense. It does. Yeah. Plus, what you've got to remember is that Bounty, and, well, St. Louis Distillers as a company is internationally available. You know, Bounty is huge in New Jersey, in um, in North America. It's, it's probably the biggest selling state uh, for Bounty Rum. Um, and we know what the Americans can be like right. in terms of they prefer their sweeter profiles. So we've got to... As much as we'd love to be able to make a, a specific ABV rum of every skew for every different country, we've got to have that generalization of it. You know, this is the current trend across the vast majority of the places that we sell bounty rum to. They prefer a sweeter rum. So bounty coconut ticks that box. We have a bounty lime as well, which we don't bring into the UK anymore. Um, but again, it's a big seller uh, outside of that. So it, it ticks off for a lot of people. You know, Bounty Dark maybe doesn't do as well in North America as it would here in the UK. But I think if you look at what else North America has to offer in terms of rum, they're not up to that stretch in my mind. You know, they're still learning a lot of how the production works compared to our sort of connoisseurs we get a lot more here in the UK. So, and the rest of Europe for that matter. You know, Bounty's big in France right now as well. It's, it's rare to sort of gain some traction. And is it really? Wow. It's a very different palette. You know, that's that's the apricot palette as well. So interesting. We we, we gotta make how... something be easily enjoyable across different um, different trends, different elements. Uh, but like Spirit Band being sort of a, inherently a French company, have Spirit Band have obviously got a big presence in France then, I'm I'm guessing. Yeah? No? Yeah. yeah huge. Huge. Yeah. So I mean that will be part of it as well as like people. Bum, bum, what's the word? But like people on the street to kind of, you know, bang the doors, get the word out there. Right. Yeah, there's, there's obviously, we do a lot with the, the bars and restaurants. It's mainly supermarkets naturally. It's the first port of call for a lot of people when they buy their rooms uh, in France. Um, but it's, it's always interesting, obviously, every time you, I go to St. Lucia, uh, pre-2016, you'd never see any Clement on the, on the shelves. Go now! Oh, it's everywhere. You know, it's and it, it makes sense. You know, it's it, it, as we would do when we talk to um, you know. We obviously we used to be selling Chairman's Reserve Spice in, in um, Waitrose. We took it out of Waitrose at the start of this year because we wanted to work better with the rest of the independent retailers across the UK. So, Aye. but also we, we can have a conversation, and also have you have you tried Bouncy Room? And have you tried Clement as well? It's an easier conversation than having to talk to the big guys at the supermarket sometimes, which is why it gives us the opportunity to get more available for people across the UK and not relying on their local supermarket. So it's, again, you know, it's it doesn't surprise me I see more Clement in St. Lucia now. Of course I would. But it's a, it's a conversation that we can have with all the little rum shops uh, and also the massive supermarket, which is the main one on the island. Um, you can add into the conversation now. And if it's going to sell, then yeah, of course I'll take it. So with the so with with the whole solution um, and the, the Clement, the, the um, uh, Martinique, is that, uh, what's the word, reversed as well? So do you find a lot of um, uh, solution rums in, in Martinique? Or is that kind of... Not as much as you'd expect, but that's mainly down to how it works. Pardon me. Uh, in terms of Martinique, obviously Martinique itself, um, you, you get bags, you get boxes of agriculture. You know, it's like having a box of wine. It's, <laughs> it's you just don't get it here in the UK. Let's put it that way. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I remember when I first went to Martinique, I just took a video of what was basically a, a promotion stand. There, it was just full of agriculture, and that was like at the start of the supermarket. Market, never mind the main shelves where you find the rest of the booze already. Now, there were a couple of obviously Champs Reserves in there, a couple of Apple Rodneys, and uh, nothing of bounty off memory, but that was back in 2018. No, 2019, sorry. It might have changed a little bit since then, but their uh, palettes, you've got to remember, it's the French palette. You know, it's there's not much call for uh, a molasses based, richer, bolder rum. 
Um, so again, it's it's understanding. You can't just say, "Yeah, well, we stop, we have all these brands that we own, so we you've got to stock them all, no matter what you think." It's still going to work you know we're, we're still going to be able to showcase our rooms in the best way and not force it upon people you know it's uh again that's one reason why we're talking out of waitress you know it's it's it, we don't want some of it's just easily available because we want to be able to sell as many bottles as possible we want to work and introduce it in a better way and that's exactly what martinique does so oddly yeah you don't see too much of the of the english styles of saint lucia in martinique despite the way around being a little bit different yeah Fascinating. I hadn't, I hadn't actually cottoned on to the fact you'd taken it out of Waitrose. I hadn't seen it in Waitrose. Well, I don't go to Waitrose that much, to be fair, but I hadn't seen it in Waitrose the few times that I'd been, whereas I always knew that I could get Chairman's Reserve spiced from Waitrose if I needed it. Um, but I hadn't, I hadn't seen it this year, so I hadn't cottoned on to that. So that's quite that's quite an interesting point Yeah, uh, as well. You know, um, well, About February, March time. It's one of the first... Yeah. So, so many people are so focused on getting supermarket listings and actually, do you know what, it's probably not the best thing for brands no, I mean, in it's, general. It's, it's generally opened up probably more opportunities because, of, of, well, a bit of history for myself. Obviously, I used to have my own shop in Manchester and I knew that our, our kind of the first thing we did was what's available in the supermarkets so we don't stock it in our own because it's, it's price. You know, we, we can't compete against supermarket pricing. Uh, but also, as a brand, we can't really control that price either. You know, it's it, we can't say to a retailer, no matter who, they, no, it's got to be twenty one. Well, no, because their their GP might be a little bit different. You know, they have different ideas about how to promote it as well. Especially if it's a rum or a style of rum that their audience isn't necessarily you know asking too much for, but they know it's going to generate some interest. Um, so, I know that when I had my place, it was a bit. Well, do I stock Chairman Spice? Because obviously I, I work with the guys, so maybe I should. But ultimately, I'm probably not going to sell any because it's not. <laughs> I can't get down to that same price without giving it away. Um, yeah. So it was. Yeah. I. So ironically, we've actually now started working more with, especially in, in certain sort of group uh, retails um, across the UK as well. And we're talking in Scotland and the Isle of Man, uh, Northern Ireland as well where we can actually work with them better and a bit more defined and tailored to, you know, their audience. Um, and Chairman Spice is our biggest. Bounty Spice is obvious in terms of the Bounty Range as well because Spice Rum is a trend. We, we can't yeah. deny people are getting on board with rum because of Spice Rum. And I, I, I love that. You know, it's a conversation that you can have, especially at rum fests, uh, and get them on board to what else is in that range. You know, have we tried the Bounty White on the Bounty Dark? Bounty goals the same thing. It's just got less spices in it. You know, it's uh, and that's you can't do that in a supermarket. We can do that in a retail of a classic independent corner shop or a, a, you know, a beautifully uh, cuisine restaurant or something like that where you can actually talk to someone who would yeah. understand it and guide you better. If you haven't, of course, gone to Steve the Barman's reviews price on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, can, I completely and utterly agree. And it's, it's sort of a conversation that we sort of touched on actually this afternoon. You know, when it comes to brands where you can take your customers, your, 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 you know, your people at home or whatever on a journey, there aren't actually that many brands that I can think of that actually do that. You know, you, you do say like Appleton or, or Dorley's or Mount Gay or, or something like that. You kind of have this whole, well, this is our entry level age drum this is our higher age drum and this is that but there aren't many people that actually can convert is that the right one convert people from those two and then with the same brand build loyalty build trust actually then convert them into like a white rum or a gold rum or a dark rum and i think that's i think that's what the rum industry needs more of to be fair it's kind yeah, of those no. chairman's <laughs> reserves exactly the same you've got the white you've got the um You've got the spiced rum, and then you can naturally people get people onto the uh, the original, and then the legacy or the, the forgotten cask, and then onto Admiral Rodney if you like. You know, it's that. It's kind of what, yeah. I kind of like what Solution Distillers are all about at the moment. It's it's really resonating. It is. Right it way. is. Yeah. We, we we we're very lucky in terms of how it's all sort of planned out. Obviously, <laughs> as I said at the beginning, this is all Laurie Barnard sort of a uh, uh, dream and focus. You know, he wanted to showcase what his production methods could do. And that we're not just talking, you know, the stills, but obviously you're reintroducing sugarcane 
so we can start using the juice and not just rely on molasses. You know, what could that do? You know, introducing a pot still in, in the late nineties because a column still could actually do so much, but what would a pot still add to that? You know, and um, understanding that the different plates in our column still, I mean, we have 45 overall, uh, you know, would the very, very top really offer some of the best or is it more about plate first? Or, you know, we have a vendor, which is a hybrid. It's a pot and a column together. You know, we, we just would never have known that if we didn't care. We're not, yeah. we're not just making a run. And because we're obviously bouncing with the historical elements from the 70s, Apple Rodney was from the 70s as well. Um, so despite, you know, being made the same way with column stills, that's two very different brands, two very different focuses. Um, and then you can throw in Chem Deserve into the mix, and that's a whole new conversation. But there's so much correlation between them all, you can't, you don't really get that with many distilleries. You know, you get a distillery for something like, uh, you know, Foursquare as an example, you've got Foursquare Exceptional Casks, which is sort of in my mind, if you're going to relate to that, that's the Apple Rodney shelf. You know, offering something a little bit different with the barrels, different the ABVs, uh, maybe the Chevy Reserve Master Selection to a point as well. You know, it's working out the, the blends of the pots and columns and so on. But then you've got the Dawley's range, which is the Chevy Reserve range, but also Dawley's is quite easy to appreciate as the go-to on the island and that's that's bounty as well so it's there's, there's there's a lot of correlation between different distilleries but there's also then only a handful of distilleries that only have one brand and that's it you know one that's yeah. only internationally available you've got to go to the island to to, to try them all you know so we're, we're in a very unique position I feel. uh and yeah. the fact that if I mean, i'm off to uh, germany next week but i know i will see at least two out of three, if not all three brands of St. Lucia Stillers in Germany. Because we don't give it as a package. You can have, a, obviously, we can work out whatever works, depending on what trend is happening in that country. But there's a call for all three, which is just unheard of at this time as well, when we're in a massive uh, rum appreciation boom. You know, yeah. this bouncy chairmans and Abba Rodney have something for everybody. They just happen to come from the same distillery. It's it's, fa it's it's clever business, but it's it's fascinating as well. And as you just brought something else up that I kind of I would love. I will chat about this um, another time. But I would love to get you back on uh, for Chairman's Reserve. But what you mentioned about the stills, because I know there's a few people in here that would love to geek out about the different types of stills. I've been on the Chairman's Reserve website quite a few times and looked at a, it's like a PDF that you've got to download about the different plates and all that, the differences between the legacy, yeah, the forgotten cast. Uh, yeah, and it's just like, wow. You know, it's all this, like, this is how this rum is created with these plates in the same still, and this one's got 20 plates, this one's got 37 plates or whatever it was. It's so fascinating just to see how this affects the rum. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, we had um, our master blender, Denny DePlacy, was in London, uh, a couple of weekends ago, and we obviously we did a, a masterclass at Trailer Happiness. Denny's been there for for years. He was there when Laurie was was still uh, around, um, you know, working together on on essentially the next generation of of what's going to be made. Um, and his his understanding of what needs to be done. I mean, it's a very difficult job to have. Uh, you know, it's it sounds great. You know, drinking twenty thirty. 40 rums in just one morning alone and then doing it all again after lunch while also making the actual rums and make sure the consistency is there. It sounds, oh, it's just drinking rum for a living. Yeah, but it's also, there's a huge reputation on the line as well. <laughs> and if he's got a cold, oh, oh. so it was great to see the enthusiasm and appreciate that, yeah, this is this is something we need to talk about. You know, we, anyone can say, especially on a website these days, media yes we, we we triple distill it's you know it's once in a pot still twice on our column and then that's the end of that conversation so, well, what, what what do those stills offer you know the copper doesn't just sort of clean and strip down the flavors it actually adds some impact as well you know in my mind some of our stills offer things like orange you get uh, some marshmallow tasting notes you know it's that texture for it and obviously it's not physically adding marshmallow 
but it's the same for the tannins of a, of a barrel you know it's what what does each one actually offer so and we can say that you know we, we can tell you on the next episode stay tuned yeah now let's it's, let's do that. And I think you've you've nailed it. And I've had this chat so many times with people like you in the industry. You know, the one thing, these guys, you know, my community and me, you know, the one thing we're crying out for is education. But unless you're actually in the industry, you know, they, these guys find it hard to get the education. They want the knowledge. They want to know how this thing... But, it's just no one out there doing it. And it's just no one. This is what I know. These guys are absolutely loving you at the moment because they're, they're going to watch you back. And the people that are going to watch this over the next couple of days are just going to be blown away by, uh, to be fair, is Ash as well. But the knowledge you guys have got that just can talk about it and make we, rum we, we, we relatable. Have hide, We've got nothing to hide. We want to be transparent. Yeah. We understand. People are, are, are more understanding of what they have in their mouth. You know, it's... Um, they, they want to know why it tastes like it does. You know, why should I have this one over this one? Because I love this one, but you say this one's better. Tell me why. And if you, I, I get it. You know, not every brand can do it uh, for whatever reason, or not every salesperson or every brand ambassador maybe um, is, is fully clued on for whatever reason. It, there's always anomalies. I, I get that, um, which is why I pride myself on saying that I've been. I've seen seen these stills in action i've seen the tanker where our molasses is, is is literally piped in from the tanker itself straight into our distillery you know it's a you're like bloody hell that's that's already doing something to this end game you know it's it's like the whole cane to bottle experience and relaying that in the right way as well you know the bounty sort of um clientele is like i say that is that music carnival people are they really a Notting Hill Carnival going to be asking, oh, you tell me more about this party, Dark? Or are they just going to have it in a rum punch and then move on? <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm, also, I'm still going to say to him, oh, yeah, to be fair, if you like Bounty Dark, you probably like, like uh, our Bounty Spice as well. It's got some beautiful flavours in there. You, you love cinnamon? Give this one a go. There you go. I've just said it's got loads of cinnamon in it. And they like it because I've said them something while pouring it and giving it to them at the same time. Chairman Spice, <laughs> that's a different conversation. I'd start saying, don't start swapping keys in a bowl. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's just how you present it. And I, I'm lucky enough to be doing this for a long time. I I, I know a lot of people who are starting out um, are always a little bit scared when talking to consumers, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's face-to-face -face as well, because you don't know what the questions are going to be. I, I know a lot of connoisseurs, a lot of rum geeks start to challenge people, you know. Let, let's see if he knows anything about this. I know more about this because I've been on social media for too long. <laughs> and they'll, and they'll, they'll try and you know, trip them up. Um, but consumers are more savvy, no matter what level of they are. I, at any time I host a consumer tasting, I always start with, what do we drink? Is it spice rum? Is it coconut? Is it dark rums? Is it upside down and optic when you choose it? You know, and you're, oh, right. So, Spice from Kraken, who's, who's up for Kraken? I'm Kraken, they want Kraken, yeah. Or Old J, or Picardi Ocar, or, yo. Know, and it's nine times out of ten, you're going to get brands you recognize. And then yeah. someone will throw in Bloody Love a Red Leg. Like, I'll be four square spiced, German spice, bit of bounty. You're like, ah, oh, okay. And that's becoming more frequent because people are trying different things and understanding what makes it different. And to be fair, the last two years, despite being a hellish of COVID, we, we saw the amount of tastings that we could get involved with, yourself included, obviously, for something like tonight. People are willing to give it a go. That's why the people joining us tonight, to find out yeah. more about what Bounty is, despite probably most of us never having it before. You couldn't do that five years ago at all. No. Yeah, exactly. Completely, completely agree with you. Completely and utterly agree with you. It's um, oh, we could we could chat all night and do a part two and a part three and a part four. You're you're going to be at Rumfest, aren't you? <laughs> you're going to be at Rumfest, aren't you? Uh, we are just for the Monday, the trade day. Oh, are you not? Are you not there exhibiting on Saturday, Sunday? Do you know what? Oh, there's there's a few brands. I'm like, what's going on here? There's a few brands not there Saturday, Sunday. That's kind of shocked me. Okay. Um, well, we, we look at it as, obviously, we, we, we have to be there in some capacity, of course. It's the biggest rum show, but it's yeah. not my own uh, in the UK. <laughs> but um, we see it as an opportunity to launch something a little bit different. Now, this year, we haven't got anything too big to launch. 
Next year might be a different conversation to be had. So oh, okay, we, we, all right. <laughs> we've also got to make sure that we, we like I said, we've got to be there. So we're there for the trade day on the Monday, um, because obviously we still want to be able to introduce you know some of the bouncy rums to the trade of London and so on. Um, but also there's other things happening in that weekend that we need to also be at. So it's it's just making sure that we're not missing out on anything too much, and it's not always dare I say, focus on London as well. Um, you know, it, even at Notting Hill Carnival, that's an August bank holiday. There were two things happening in the in the north of England and Scotland, and I was in Copenhagen. Yeah. So again, it's just trying to <laughs> just trying to make sure we're not missing out, but also still a part of as much as we can be as well. Yeah. We're, we're, we're a small team. That's it. It's was only for four of us at the moment. That's it. So, so you're you're not around. Well, I'm assuming Ash will be around. One of you will be around. I, I, I will be there. I'll be myself. I will be there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What about anyone around Saturday, Sunday? Uh, unless they're just they're turning up as uh, a themselves. Right. right. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll I'll definitely see you Monday because I'm there. I was I was just going to say I, I thought you were or someone would be there. I was just because I know there's a few guys coming down Saturday or Sunday, and I just was going to say uh, I'll introduce you to them sort of thing just to sort of say hello but if you're not going to be there you're not going to be there oh look yeah. out katie's here now look <laughs> katie stratford soda is here in the right, comments that's, that's all <laughs> no that's that's uh brilliant uh, honestly dave that's been um fantastic tonight mm -hmm. i i can already see there's a few people in there that have bought from well i'm assuming master of bolt because that's where i push people to but i can see a coconut sale and a spiced rum sale gone through which is uh which is kind of amusing. Thank you all for paying the, my <laughs> the, the, honestly, these are fan. I was the, you know, the dark absolutely blew me away when I had it in buy, but I loved it. But the whole, just to showcase the brand like that, superb, absolutely it's, superb. It's, it's a versatile brand. It, it, don't get me wrong; it might not be for everyone, and we're not going to ever get too precious about that. It's a great introduction to what Saint Lucia rums can do, and yeah. it's versatile enough to be drank on its own. Again, all right, maybe too young for some people. I've seen some comments saying, you know, it's, it's great as it is right now, but it may not be for them the next time they have it. Fine. But maybe give it a go with cola, ginger ale, as we said, tonic water as well. You know, it's it's good enough to give another go in a different way. And I would love that to be the sort of the thing that everyone sees Bounty Rum as. It may not be their favourite Chem Reserve, especially if people are fans but not already. It can be quite hard to... I'm not going to say the word downgrade, but go down to the, to, to the bottom shelf of that one uh, because it's not going to have the same complexities of, as Germans, obviously. But then again, maybe Bounty Dark would. That's the cool thing about it. Interesting. Well, that's what's right. Be, before I let you go, I'll change the question. Uh, I, I, I was going to come back to the, uh, the, the rum over 50 quid, but we'll save that until you come back on with Chairman's Reserve. Okay. Um, so we do that. Just a couple of cocktails or mixes that you've not mentioned tonight that you would uh, kind of advise people to try. Because I know you've got so so much rum experience, so much cocktail knowledge, so much all this sort of stuff. Like something you've not mentioned. Like so, we've mentioned rum and tonic. We've mentioned rum and ginger, rum and coke. Uh, obviously, the mai tai. You know, yeah, I've done that. Um, so. A curveball to put these guys on. Like, what, what would you call? Ooh. I would probably say, I do love a spiced Negroni. Oh, with yeah. oh, okay, spice, spiced rum, or either of the spiced rums. Predominantly Sherman spice, but Bounty spice does still work quite well. Um, okay. So, equal measures: Bounty spiced Campari and Velvet for Learnham. Oh. Interest. Oh, okay, we can have a play with that in a minute. So not not the vermouth. No, no, not the vermouth. The, the vermouth oh. is the uh, for Lerner. And I was, oh, I was interesting. Pleasures, but with the bounty spice, because obviously it's a little lighter compared to the uh, the boldest of the chairman spice. Um, I would up the ratio in terms of the amount I used, or yeah, downgrade the uh, Capari for Lerner, to say. 25 Bounty Spice and 20 the uh, latter two. Oh, that's a great shout. I've not heard of that one before. I like that. It was it was actually so, made by a friend of mine in Nottingham. Um, it was a bar called Brass Monkey. Uh, well, still there now, but Aaron lives in uh, New Zealand. And he 
I was doing a tour of St. Lucia Distillers Rums. Uh, this was before Chairman, uh, sorry, this was before Bounty. Uh, so we did Chairman Reserve, Admiral Robby, and the latter uh, expression of the 1931 range. Um, and it, it, every city of how they approach spice rum. And I was like, well, Nottingham, what what you know, what would you drink this with? And everyone was like, oh, the Negroni. Well, <laughs> that's gin. He's like, yeah, he disappeared. Uh, I didn't realize there was a bar upstairs. He came back down with this, obviously, a, a Negroni. I uh, tried it. I was like, that's really good. He's like, yeah, it's chairman spiced. It's like, is it? But I, I, it's, it's a little bit sweeter as well. So, oh, for learning myself. I was like, yeah. And it, it balances because because we've got fresh spices, which is why it works so well with bounty as spice as well. You've got the fresh spices and the rum because it's still 40%. You then got I take, I take it just very flame. quickly. I take it we're talking velvet for learning, yeah? Yeah, yeah, velvet for learning. JD yeah, says. cool. Yeah, so because you got the sweetness of clove and lime for learning, and then you got the bitterness of Campari as well, it actually bounces quite nicely. Interesting, interesting. So that's one we're going to make that now. Everyone's asking me to make it, so I'm going to make it just so one more before you go. If you, uh, or if you, really honest, to be fair, I, I don't think you're going to pick, pick that to be fair, but there you go. Uh, or I, I could potentially because I'm going to say a word hurricane. Oh, I see, yeah, see, yeah, as, 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 that's long, where I'm as a long serve. I, mean, I, I, I love a painkiller, I, I, I adore Puss's Rum, and the idea of the painkiller blends so well. Um, to be fair, Bounty Dark Painkiller still works, but obviously, it lacks the, the sort of navy kick. Um, yeah, but when I used to wear my own. Um, uh, bar, which I actually called Mario Bay Bar and Cafe in Manchester. My, uh, my hurricane was the traditional recipe for a hurricane, which, which was 120 milliliters of Smith & Crossover proof, 60 milliliters <laughs> of passion fruit syrup, and 60 milliliters of lemon juice. Shaky, shaky, plumped, easy. And it was one of my biggest selling cocktails because it actually tasted really well. It, it balanced. Now, obviously, Bounty Dark isn't an overproof, but it still has the richness that can balance well with the passion fruit and the lemon juice. So, yeah, works very, very well for me. That. Just very quickly, the passion fruit, because obviously, uh, you'll probably know, but I do a lot of stuff with drink stuff, and I've got access to every bloody syrup brand in the country and puree brand. The passion fruit syrup, or puree, what are you going for? Royale. Royale, interesting. <laughs> okay, it's my go-to brand for that. Da, da, da. <laughs> Have you tried the others? Have you tried Monin Lufui? Have you tried um, uh, ODK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ODK is good. Um, I mean, I've, I've not had say the full range of ODK, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's a decent one. Um, I, I, the reason why I use Real is the shelf life's good. Yeah, and it's easy enough to squeeze out the bottle, and it's not too thick to make it stuck in the jigger driver. Can Can I be open and honest? In full disclosure for everyone, the the only reason I don't talk about that is because drink stuff don't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, flip, I flipping love the brand. I absolutely love the brand. The so, drink stuff. You just said drink stuff. Uh, drink stuff suck every sort of pure going. Every, every everything except for some unknown reason they don't work. Who's the um? It's American beverages, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. Yeah, merit or whatever they're called, something like that. But yeah, they just don't deal with them, and because they've got ODK, because they've got we, we do a hell of a lot of work with Monin. But I tell you what, the real stuff. The ginger, the ginger puree syrup. Oh my god, it's good. Yeah, ginger, the spice pumpkin is is fantastic as well for that kind of thing. Yeah, and the uh, black cherry on toast and the blueberry. To be fair, oh so good. Oh. Yeah, I, I do like. To be fair, the the, the black cherry with about dark. It's, it makes uh, a little dash of um, cacao. It's beautiful. It's, it's a black forest gato. Oh, yeah, or oh, perhaps perhaps I should just. Be... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to drink stuff. Perhaps I should just bring a bit off drink stuff because you can so everyone at home, you can buy that through Master of Bolt. You can buy every single Real through Master of Bolt. Um, but I just I just don't talk about Real because of drink stuff. That's that's all. But I, I do love Real. I do. They're amazing. Right, let's let's do this spice rum with Granny before we let you go. Flipping hell, that's good. Oh, I like that. 
Do you still do equal measures or do you get bump up the spice? No, I, I used, uh, I'll be honest, I used chairman's. Oh, okay, cool. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, I did, well, I did a little one, 15, 15, 15. Oh, that's really tasty. Well, the, the, the cool thing is the chairman's spiced, in, in, sorry, in terms of St. Lucia, Campari is one of the biggest imported spirits to the island. So you'd, you'd actually find the chairman's spiced Negroni in a couple of the um, hotel resorts, concert menus. Because when I went over last year in the 2019, just before COVID kicked in, um, I did a hotel training program. And obviously introduced, because they have a lot of their own homemade for learning. Obviously, Campari is very easy to get a hold of. You, there's adverts on the on the billboards for Campari. It's crazy. Uh, and obviously, you're not lacking German Spiced. So it, it makes a lot of sense for the palette as well. I we just didn't really put it all three together. It would work out. So you do see that a lot of the other. I think you've just reminded me, I was going to ask that earlier, but the spices and all that. We, I, there's a video coming out. I've done a Mai Tai, another Mai Tai video coming out on Wednesday, but blah, blah, blah. I, I chatted a little bit about Falernum in there. Now, my knowledge of Falernum, that it's predominantly a Barbados thing. Yeah. But I have heard a few stories that most Caribbean islands make their own Falernum. True. Or in this, in the sense of St. Lucia, so St. Lucia does have a Falernum. Falernum is a thing to them as well. Is basically what I'm asking. Yeah, as in the fact that you can't really physically buy a bottle that's made in St. Lucia. You know, it's not one that's commercially available, right. or, or that I'm aware of at least. Uh, you know, we don't as as a distillery, um, but there are ones you can buy in the supermarket that do come from Barbados. But it's not the John D. Taylor's, for example. Right. Uh, or you can make your own homemade one, as we do for making our own homemade spice rum. Yeah, it's 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 more common than I think to expect. But then again, <laughs> here in the UK, we're not one for making our own for learners because we're lacking fresh clothes and fresh lines and you know the time <laughs> to do something like that. And if if you like me, you just buy it anyway because you can't be asked. But a lot of this lot love making their own. Uh, stuff, syrups and all that. So I can imagine that being the next big thing. This, boys and girls, is absolutely delicious. Mummy Barman, if you are still watching, Mummy Barman, come in and try this because this will probably be right up your street as well. Um, this is amazing. It's got, I, lo I love, I'm not, as I've got older, my palate has gone bittersweet. I love that bittersweet balance thing. And that's just banging. Absolutely. Never would have thought about swapping the vermouth for, for Lennon. That's I, just genius. Uh, I, I was exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's there's not many cocktails that I would have again, especially in bar. I'm always up for trying something different, you know, going through a cocktail menu or or challenging the bartender to make it something unique. But on the odd occasion, I mean, it's, it's a groaning, it's all measures. And most bars, especially rum bars, have all three ingredients. So, it's yeah, I'm just like, oh, I'll have a spice Negroni. Oh, what is it? Chairman Spice for Learning, about equal measures, slice of orange on the side. Cool. You can't go wrong, man. That's that's gonna get some love on a few videos. <laughs> that's amazing. Look, Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. I'm I'm gonna stay on for a bit. I'm just gonna do a few serves and all this, but I'm gonna stay on. But you've there's a lot of love coming in from you at the moment in the comments there. Thank you so much for tonight. We will a hundred percent uh when the time is right get you back on for Chairman's Reserve because I would love to do the geek out with the stills and, and all that sort of stuff with you. We'll get some We'll we'll go proper geek out. I'll, I'll even do them if you want. But can't that that PDF that's still of the um, <laughs> uh, or the pic the picture of how the different stills do. Or, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, if you go to the website, yeah. you know, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I think people would love to see that. But honestly, mate, thank you so so much for tonight. Thank you for organising the bounty one uh, a few weeks ago as well. Come on, ain't Ash. Um, it's been brilliant. I know what this love this lot are going to say. I'll um I'll give you stats and all that tomorrow or whatever. But Mate, thank you. Honestly, I will. I, we will let you go. I'm going to support. I'm going to stay on for another half an hour or so. But we'll let you go. We'll crack on. But um, no problem honestly. at all, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. And I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a proper drink face to face very soon. I'm sure. Yes. I'll probably the ground, would you believe? Yeah, on uh, on uh, Monday on uh, Rumfest. I'm down there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So we're we'll 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 down there. Yes. Fantastic. Honestly, thank you very much, mate. You take no care. Worries, See, you See you later, thank boss. You right. Let's. Uh...